been a question for a long time, who's the best sailor in the world? Equal boats, equal playing field. Look at the speed! I'm just as emotional as ever. And I wear my heart on my sleeve. Sorry, guys. Nice guy! And how much is that going to hurt Slingsby? There's a bit of a narrative that Ben and I are, are pretty big rivals. I'm so angry right now. It's a huge career accomplishment for me to for people to actually question, am I better than the greatest sailor of all time? Quite an interesting storyline. Oh, Capsize for oh. Great Britain in the finale oh. as Australia sails away. I don't want to be the guy that makes a mistake and loses a million dollars for our team. Sail GP season two is now reaching boiling point. Six races down, two to go, and there's still four teams left in the hunt for those coveted spots in the grand final. Look at the speed, 98 kilometers an hour. Absolutely unbelievable. But the Australian Tom Slingsby is used to this kind of pressure. He took the first ever championship at the grand final in Marseille back in 2019. Australia is the 2019 Sail GP champion. Tom Slingsby is a fighter. He's an Olympic and America's Cup champion. He's an eight-time laser world champion, a multiple moth world champion, and he's won offshore races. So in that context, it's no surprise that he's been crowned 2021 Rolex World Sailor of the Year, a title that he'd already won back in 2010. There is no doubt that Tom has proved himself across the entire spectrum of the sailing world. But now in season two of Sail GP, he's got to defend his title against easily the most gifted sailors of his generation. Maybe the best the sailing world has ever seen. It's been a question for a long time, who's the best sailor in the world? And you can make so many different arguments but now that we're all in the same type of boat, equal boats, equal playing field, it's quite an interesting storyline. On offer this season is a total of $2.1 million in prize money. There's $1 million alone on the line for the grand final in San Francisco. And yet I think this victory is more about street cred, bragging rights, legacy, call it what you will, than it is about money because now the greatest sailor of all time has entered the scene. It's Great Britain and Ben Ainsley who take the first victory of 2020. Fantastic season of head-to-head -head confrontation. Slingsby coming off second best this time. So angry right now. Sir Ben Ainsley. At the Sail GP event in Sydney in 2020, Ben Ainsley turned up with a brand new team and absolutely wiped the floor with the current champions on home waters. You know that would have stunned. I think it's always tough when you're sort of hometown favourite and won the league the previous season. Clearly they were the favourites to win that event. He was so caught up in the event and trying to do the right things for the team as a CEO that I don't think he got to put the sailing hat on enough. The number of spectators and fans that came out for that event in 2020 was massive. It was a lot more than in season one. And the amount of press that were now interested in it, I'd look over at Tom and he just had a queue of people wanting to speak to him. And so in the end, you know, I think Tom said, you know, he, he got a bit embarrassed by Ben, you know, they performed quite badly and, and Ben, you know, really, came in and made a statement. Uh, here we go, turning up. Looking back on that, Tom you know, would, would handle that situation differently moving forward. A big part of this championship is surviving commercially. And Ben Ainsley has done that in his first full season. He's a brand name and he's got some big name sponsors on board. And you could argue that funding is just as important as the races themselves. So Tom has got to lead from the front if he wants to keep his team employed. 
It doesn't come naturally for me being a leader. It is a bit awkward at times being the boss of these guys because we've grown up together. If we don't perform, we'll get replaced. Terrible. I was so frustrated with that result. Um, but yeah, I would love to say that I, I don't uh, get angry on the water anymore and, I, and I'm not that person, but I definitely am. I'm just as emotional as ever and I wear my heart on my sleeve. Last. You know, we still talk about that to this day. Um, he's like, that cannot happen again. What the hell were these guys doing? I think we're all a bit emotional after that loss. It wasn't, I think, the end result that hurt. It was the gap between us. Welcome to Bermuda Sail Grand Prix, the first event of the 2021 Sail GP campaign. Now we've got a higher level of competition. We've got the greatest Olympic sailor of all time, Ben Ainsley here. And there's nothing better for my personal legacy and the legacy of all our team to go out there and beat one of the greatest has ever been in boxing. They always say to be the best, you've got to beat the best. When the next event happened, he started a near perfect event when we got to Bermuda. Unfortunately, Ben did pip him in that very final race, which I'm sure rubbed a bit of salt in the wound. And um, I'm sure Tom would have been stewing over that for a long time. It's Sir Ben Ainsley shutting the race down, and they are going to be the winners here in Bermuda of Sail GP Bermuda. What a comeback from Ainsley, and how much is that going to hurt Slingsby? I feel a little hard done by. We sound so well all week, and we're close, but not quite there. I, I'm definitely very well aware that there's a bit of a narrative that Ben and I are, are pretty big rivals. I actually do think he's the greatest sailor of all time. But with Ben, uh, I'm for sure he was a hero of mine. I looked up to him, I saw what he did in the, in the Olympics and I was in awe and I was inspired by that and I idolised him. The history between these two goes back a long way because as a kid, Ben was Tom's idol. Then they became teammates in that historic America's Cup comeback in 2013. So to put this into context, Tom has gone from wanting to be like Ben, to training with him, to learning how to be the best, and then finally learning how to beat the best. So when you look at it through that lens, you can see that for Tom, this is like trying to beat Ronaldo or Serena Williams or Michael Jordan. And that's why it mattered so much to him. And that's why the loss in Sydney 2020 affected him so badly. Honestly, I couldn't care less about beating Tom. I think he's a really, really decent guy. A good friendship, a lot of mutual respect. So he's one of the greats of our sport. Being beaten by the greatest sailor of all time into second place isn't exactly a bad result. Now, Tom is a fighter, especially when there's a reputation at stake. And that's something that he's learned the hard way through his Olympic career. I've had a bit of a, a wild ride, the highs and lows of sailing. My first Olympics in China 2008, I was the favorite heading in and I ended up choking and uh, it was heartbreaking. For six months after that, I was, I was actually pretty depressed. It was very hard to reset. In London 2012, I was able to sort of fight off the demons of China and, and go on to win uh, the gold medal there. Once I set a goal, I I'll, I'll, won't stop till I achieve it. Him being the emotional one, I feel personally, it's, it's our job to really help him flick the switch and for him to be able to take it in, um, especially when he is emotional, and be able to bounce back, it's almost like he needs that anger, he needs that vent to then re-trigger him and refocus him. What the f is that? Hey! Coming up. Yeah, on the water, it's um, incredibly serious. The team still has that ability to, to switch out and, and have a bit of a laugh. 
Generally speaking, it's um, it's a really intense environment. Good heel, good right high. More pressure coming down, the weather. He's definitely got a fiery personality. You know, he says that he's always pretty chilled, but you know, I think there's probably a bit of, a couple of bits of footage that you could get up which would speak differently. A feeling within the team where people have to be so honest um, and quite transparent and, and therefore, yeah, you do have to have um, some pretty hard conversations. A team culture is so important and I'm so lucky with the team we've got. Uh, team Australia, I think we're, um, we win together and we lose together. Um, there's no blaming in our team. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I think it's tough. It's tough being a skipper of one of these boats, you know, yeah, and reviewing the Oracle Cloud data and then collaborating it, getting the right dialogue and expression to us in which he, what he thinks is important. Pretty evident they were just a bit more dialed in there, and they were generally just a little bit flatter than us. I thought something went wrong the way we went up. I want to check the data. Yeah. No, it's so odd. If I see something on the water, I'll make a note of it to my coach and I'll say, I think um, it might be Team GBR attacking a little bit differently. I think they're swapping their rudder differential at a different time or the foils are doing a little bit different thing to us. And then after the day of sailing, I'll go check that specific point that we're looking for. But in SailGP, in life, inevitably, things don't always go well. And when they don't, that affects him. Two, one, stop turning. Lost some rudders. Oh. The technical issues in Taranto and Saint Tropez. He finished last in both of those races, and it created this roller coaster of a season. Still struggling at eight kilometres an hour. You look, it must be gear failure, surely. That's a big, big blow for Slingsby. Tom Slingby have a very difficult day today. Sorry, guys, I'm not angry at you guys. Angry at him. Last again. He's a bit up and down, a bit like a yo-yo, but if he didn't show that emotion, it just would mean that he, d he doesn't care, he's not putting in 100%. So to see that, it actually lifts us as a crew as well. It can be hard to deal with sometimes, but it makes us want to perform for him as well. He needs the outlet, he needs to get it off his chest so he can move forward. Racing. Tom Slingsby is someone who, when things go well, he just can't stop winning. What a way to bounce back from last in Toronto to first in Plymouth. Congratulations, Australia sailed GP for the victory in Aarhus. We're now seeing a new Tom Slingsby emerge. And I think there's a strong argument to say that that has everything to do with his personal life and having his girlfriend by his side. This season was a very tricky year with all the COVID implications and I ended up being overseas for seven months. Tom said, look, we'd only recently met and he said, look, I'm going overseas for a few months, but I don't want to go without you. Um, how would you feel about being the team coordinator for that period of time so that we can be together and kind of see where it takes us. Because we we're kind of at that point that if he left for six months, I'd, we'd only been dating for four months. And it was like, if he left for six months, I wouldn't, we probably would have just drifted apart. So we kind of needed to make it happen. <laughs> it's crazy. And we were living, working, doing everything together. And I was like, we were like, it will make us or it will break us. I honestly, every time I jump on a boat at the moment, I feel like I, I can win every race I'm put in. And it's a great feeling to have that. And there's certainly been years in the past where I haven't had that confidence at all. Five months dating and not now, like you know what I mean, me seeing now. What are we? We're at a little over 11 months, this crazy yeah. Thing. yeah. And on top of each other, working for each other, and yeah, I mean, it's kind of living in each other's pockets, no, exactly. for... like that's insane. Yeah. It's not like we knew each other and we were like besties, it's like we lived together for a month, yeah, and, <laughs> and then, then we came overseas, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, who does but, that? No, no. 
I think, well, I, I do think we've worked quite well together. Like, we are... You're more chilled at work so than at home. Oh, my yeah. God, I actually am, man. You are. <laughs> you see me at my most stressed time, and you see me when I'm... Yeah, I, I've just had a terrible day. I've made all these mistakes on the water. I come in, and it's kind of... Uh, it's a bit of catch-22, because all I want to do is see you and hug you, because I know you'll make me feel better. But I, I'm also furious and I don't want you to, you to see me mad. I feel like a bit of a missed opportunity and a bit unlucky so far in the season. And did you have anything like this in, like, season one? Like, any similar boat issues? Uh, we did have a couple of boat issues in season one, but it was never... <laughs> we never finished last. And now when I race for a million dollars, all I'm thinking about is I, I don't want to make a mistake that's going to cost my team the championship win and and all this money for them and their families. I don't want to, I don't want to let them down. The European Sail GP season was brought to a close in Cadiz in southwestern Spain. And right on cue, big wins arrive. And this is great news for Tom because he and the Australians excel in these conditions in the same way that Nathan and the Japanese team do in light wins. And the Australians need a victory. They want to restore their confidence ahead of their home event in Sydney. He has this ability to push to the limit, but never go beyond it. Look at the speed, hitting close to 90. It's it there. That was incredible reactions. Strong winds, big waves. I think it's, it's just in our blood. Stand by. We realised that they were extreme conditions, and we decided not to do the warm-up. We saw a, quite a few sort of big crashes. We decided that it, it was too risky, knowing that we're pretty comfortable in the stronger winds and we don't need to push it as much. Here we go, turning down for the gun. The line goes clear, the fleet's clear, but Spithill must drop back, and at the best angle and fastest at the gun, it's Ainsley. He should lead from here at Mark 1, but how brave are you feeling, Ben? Out of the corner of my eye, I saw that Ben was having a problem. They've stuffed it, this could be over, capsize coming. I don't think anyone really realises how on edge these boats are. It's such a fine line between sailing the boat perfectly and capsizing. Defending champions from season one, congratulations, Australia takes the Spain Sail Grand Prix. Okay, I'm loading kid. Kind of nice to see Tom Slingsby with a spile there after the disappointment of finishing last in Saint-Tropez. I grew up being a tennis player. Um, I guess my mother was a tennis player and my dad was a sailor. Uh, tennis was the number one focus. By the age of 13, 14, I had sponsors, I had multiple coaches, I, had, uh, I was travelling Australia doing tennis tournaments, but I started falling out of love with it. When the Sydney Olympics were on, he took himself on the train every day, train and bus, to get down to watch the sailing on the harbour. I was down there cheering on Michael Blackburn in the laser class. Um, he was competing for Australia and hope, I was hoping he would get the, the gold medal. Uh, in the end, it came down to Ben Ainsley and Robert Scheidt. I still remember it. It was when I was on the train home, I decided then and there I wanted to win a gold medal for Australia. And I'm... Uh, I'm very goal orientated. Your name is up on uh, up on the board down here. It's cool that they keep all this stuff still here. Yeah, no, it's really good. He actually, on our first day, said, I'm a sailor. And my response was, yeah, but like, what do you actually do? Like, I thought he was, I thought I like put him in the same criteria as like a fisherman, like it's your hobby. Anyways, and I went home and Googled him and I was like, oh, okay. They just live and breathe, Tom. Look, you do realize that this job means that I'm away all the time. And sometimes he says, look, I just want to be home. And his parents are like, no, you have to go. You have to go and keep sailing and doing what you love. Like they are, his number one fans. And um, and I honestly think he's he's where he is now because of how much his parents supported him. There's not too many families around that have gold medal winners, America's Cup winners, Sail GP winners. 
we've been sort of very fortunate to uh, be able to, you know, follow his career, to support his career. The last month I was in Europe, I was, I was tired mentally, and uh, but I get to get home, I get to reset, I get to be in my own bed, I get to play with my dog each day, I get to uh, go for walks on the, the waterfront that I that I know really well, and uh, yeah, I'm getting a nice reset now before I head into the Sydney event. It's unbelievable when you when you're away for that long and you get to come home and see your parents who you haven't seen for so long. This brings back a few memories, eh? Yeah, lots of memories. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool to come back and see all this. And there was always such a huge debate about who gets the prime spots on the bottom and who had to get the boat spots on the top. And and when I started getting good results in sailing, they said, okay, Tom gets a bottom spot. And I just wanted to follow my sister Alana into she was doing it and she looked like she was having a lot of fun and I just wanted to join her and yeah. so I just copied her and I didn't know that it was going to be my career for the next 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> if you really love sailing and you want to do it for the rest of your life you can do exactly what I've done and even more than I've done. It brings back so many memories for me. I, I was one of these young guys. Yeah, of course. What's your like, question? How do you, like, go faster? Like, do you go lower than, like, the... Um, it's, it's a balance, really. It, it, yeah, obviously, you can't just be lower and faster. If you're too low, you're not going upwind enough. But for me, I try to get to what I like to call, like, hull speed, where the boat gets to a speed and then it's hard to go faster. And then I start working on the height from then. <laughs> you used to sail with Alana in the early days on the Sabo. Yeah. And she used to pay you what? 20 cents. She used to pay me to stay on the boat rather yeah. than jumping over the side. I got paid young. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Uh, good memories. Right now, the Aussies sit on top, one point ahead of the US team and, and our Japanese team that are equal. So, and then there's quite a few points back to, to the British team. So right now, the Australian team is in the box seat to make that final race in San Francisco. With the Australian team on top, the sponsors have come calling and they've signed on with KPMG and Wealth ahead of their home event. And that's a massive relief for the team. They can stop worrying about funding and start focusing on the racing. I've crunched the numbers and with two events left, all the Australians need is two third place finishes or better and they've booked their place in the grand final. The big question for Tom is whether he can set aside this delicious grudge match that he's got with Ben Ainsley and focus on the bigger picture, that place in the grand final. It's going to be absolutely fascinating to see what he does. I know that Tom will be absolutely gunning for this upcoming event in Sydney to set that record straight. For a POM to beat him on Sydney Harbour, boy oh boy, revenge might be coming, hopefully. <laughs> we've won one once here in Sydney and we've lost once and uh, we've, we've got our work cut out for us to, to try to win again this year. A million dollar prize money, it's the biggest prize in sailing. I actually do feel the pressure of the money for my team. What does the team need to win? You need that balance between aggressiveness and composure throughout the season, but when we get to San Francisco, when you know it's all on the line, I like to think of it as we will be going up to the 50 metre line on a rugby field and to kick the goal to win the World Cup. It's kind of how I feel, it's that measured, measured composure, but that confidence to say, I'm gonna slot this and we're gonna win the World Championship. Will our team be in the final come San Fran? Um, I'm going to say yes. Hopefully I'm not proven wrong. <laughs>